all-new Honda Civic, now available with turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Welcome to Boston, Massachusetts, in beautiful Fenway Park. This is the first of a three-game weekend series between the Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox, and the Jays are on a roll right now. They swept the Yankees at home in Rogers Center for the first time since 2000. John Gibbons Ball Club really playing good baseball. They won 10 of their last 13 games, and John said, you know what, just a matter of time. I knew this team would come around. Everything is working right now. There are three games over 500 third in the American League East, Jose Bautista. He likes this matchup tonight. David Price, he hit a home run off him last Sunday at Rogers Center, his sixth career home run against David Price. And right behind him is Josh Donaldson. He, too, has had a good run against the Red Sox so far this season. 15 hits and 41 at bats and four extra base hits. And these two guys did a number on Price the last time they faced him here. Donaldson hit a triple. Bautista hit a double in their first at bats against David Price. And it's never easy against David Price. This is a rematch of last Sunday's ball game from Roger Center. This five-time All-Star has regained his ace form after a tough start to his Red Sox career. Price is 3-0 with a sub-3 earn run average over his last four starts. His fastball has been better. His curveball has been better. He's also won eight straight games versus the Blue Jays. That winning streak is the longest by any pitcher since Roger Clemens won nine straight versus the Blue Jays from 88 through 92. Here's another thing about David Price pitching in the American League East. He has a 699 winning percentage in the East. That's the best all time among pitchers with at least 50 starts. So if you want to beat the best, you got to beat them in the American League East. Now David Price, of course, began his career in the East with the Tampa Bay Rays. It is a gorgeous night here in Boston. 21 degrees at the start of play. Price is set. Here's the first pitch of the game. Bautista takes it for a strike, and we are underway. What a beautiful night. A lot of Blue Jay fans in attendance, and this is going to be a packed house all weekend long. Sellouts tonight and tomorrow and Sunday. There is a lot of electricity in the air for tonight's ball game, the start of this series. See all the Blue Jay fans, and they have been here all afternoon taking a tour of the stadium earlier. Bautista bounces it right back to Price. Underhands to Ramirez, one down. Now let's take a look at the Boston, the rest of their defense, how it sets up here tonight. Blake Swihart, the youngster in left field, making adjustments to play in the outfield, formerly a catcher, Jackie Badley Jr. and Mookie Betts. They both have strong arms in center and right. Shaw Bogarts, Pedroia, and Ramirez from third to first and behind the plate. A hard throwing. Good receiving Christian Vasquez will handle David Price. Over at first base, that is Hanley Ramirez. The Red Sox are third in the American League in fielding percentage. Thanks to Hanley Ramirez, if you ask me, he hasn't made an error yet over there at first base. He has made all the plays. He's a converted shortstop, played some left field for him last year, but he's made a nice, smooth transition over to first base. Donaldson takes a strike. Ball on a strike to the Blue Jays' third baseman. They mentioned Donaldson hitting 366 against the Red Sox this season. You see his numbers for the regular season 13 homers and 30 RBIs. Outside. Blue Jays, we saw this building in Minnesota, obviously. They won three or four against Minnesota, because should have swept the Twins, actually. Went into New York, won two or three in New York, mm -hmm. and then. Beat the Red Sox two or three at home. But I contend they still haven't hit their stride offensively. If you ask me, I mean, they've been outscoring their opposition over those last eight games. I think it's 46 to 27, something like that over the last eight games, over 20 runs over those last eight, but they still haven't hit their stride. Three and one to Donaldson. He takes ball four, pass the baton to the next man. And the next man is hot. Edwin Encarnacion is on a five game hit streak. He's hit three home runs during that stretch. He's had RBIs in seven of his last eight games, and he's hit 310 over that stretch. Well, he's another one that has been driving in his share of runs, but he hasn't hit very well with runners in scoring position. It's under 200. 
Now can you imagine when Edwin starts to hit with runners in scoring position. He came up with a big hit on Wednesday versus the Yankees. Bases loaded single to help the post open that ball game. Edwin has 594 RBIs as a Blue Jay, closing in on 600. And he's been a run producer since he arrived with the Jays. He's got 42 ribbies for the season. Price battling his command right now. He falls behind 2 0. I think David Price has to pitch inside. He hasn't shown one of these right handed batters a ball on the inner half. Maybe he just wants to pitch away from that green monster in left field, but everything has been away. He has to be able to pitch inside. Well, he saw them firsthand the second half of the season last year as their teammates, so he knows what their strengths are. Deep to center field. This one is high and deep and out of here. A two run home run for Encarnacion and the Blue Jays strike quick here against Price. Well, you just mentioned that Price has seen the Blue Jays up close and personal last year when he was traded over here for the last couple of months, and he knows that Edwin Encarnacion can hit a fastball. Everything was away, 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 away. And I said, he's got to be able to come in sometime just to back him off the plate, give him something different to look at. Looked like he was trying to go away again and miss right down the middle. 44 RBIs for Double E. A six game hit streak. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit for Michael Saunders. For Encarnacion, that's his 11th home run of the season. Another picture perfect swing. Look where the catcher is set up. That's Christian Vasquez. He wants that ball down and away, and it's about belt high in the middle of the plate. And in this ballpark, it's never going to hold Encarnacion or some of these other sluggers that the Blue Jays throw up there. Good start to the series for Edwin. I would say so. That'll put a smile on his face. <laughs> Man at first for Justin Smoke. Smoke's had some success against Price. He's got three career home runs against the big lefty. Smoke for the season. The switch is in 274. Five homers in 15 driven in. That has been the talk all around Boston today. The Red Sox pitching woes. And it hasn't gotten better yet. Boston allowed a franchise record seven home runs in last night's game in Baltimore against the Orioles. Every Oriole run in that game came on a home run. And they were torched. And it was just a shooting gallery for the Orioles. It wasn't just yesterday. I mean, they gave up a ton of runs in that Orioles series. They've given up 25 runs in the last two games. 13 to 9 they lost on Wednesday. 12 7 they lost last night. And it hasn't been pretty. Rick Porcello got hit around. And the Orioles, they can swing the bats too mm -hmm. now. They're not a surprise in that department. 0 oh 2 to smoke. Ground ball up the middle. Bogarts to Pedroia for one. Back to first. Double play. Once again, Josh Donaldson sets the table for Edwin Encarnacion. The walk and then the big guy steps to the plate and goes deep. A two-run homer to center field for Encarnacion. He's 11. And the Blue Jays strike first.
two spot here tonight to start this ball game. Take a look at the lineup for the Boston Red Sox. They are 10 games over. They are first in the American League East. Number two hitter is Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia this season, 325 against the Blue Jays, five double seven RBIs, and he's got a personal 23 game hit streak against Toronto. And right behind him is Andrew Bogart. He might be the best young hitter in all of baseball. Put up big numbers against R.A. Dickey, and he is a tough number three hitter for any pitcher. They will go up against Ari Dickey as Ari gets ready for his 12th start of the season. Took no hitter into the sixth inning of his last start against these same Red Sox before he gave up three runs on three hits. A walk and a hit batter. Ari ended up with a no decision as the Blue Jays lost that game in 11 innings to Boston. Ari is making his second start here at Fenway Park this season. And he's dealing with the red hot Mookie Betts. I think the Red Sox know all about R.A. Dickey. You mentioned this is his fourth start this year against Boston. He's 0-2 with an ERA of about six and a half. And what's really interesting has been the approaches that the Red Sox have thrown at R.A. Dickey. I was talking to Josh Tolley today, and I, I said, tell me about the approaches that the Red Sox have had against Dickey. He goes, they've been changing. Every game, it's been different. They were aggressive. In one game, they're going to right field. In another game, they're waiting him out another day time. He also said that the first time through, they were aggressive, and the second time through the order in one game, they started hitting everything to right field. That's just veteran hitting and good hitters. Right, and that's why both Tolley and Dickey have to stay on their toes tonight. We might see some new wrinkles from them tonight. Yeah, we, we might see him mix in uh, that uh, quick hesitation move that he has or that quick pitch. We might see him drop a few other types of breaking balls against the Red Sox because you, you always have to try something different because the Red Sox are so smart. I mean, they're not just great hitters, they're smart hitters. Boogie Betts takes ball four and lead off walk. Well, let's take a look at the Blue Jays' defensive line. Of course, with Troy Tulowitzki out, you have some shuffling in the infield with the first. In the outfit, it's Saunders, Pilar, and Bautista from left to right. On the infield, Josh Donaldson is at third base. Darwin Barney's at short. Devin Travis at second. And Justin Smoke over at first. Behind the plate, of course, the knuckleball specialist, Josh Tolley for R.A. Dickey. And at shortstop, Darwin Barney will get his first start ever at shortstop here at Fenway Park. And he got the game plan on how to play shortstop here with that left field wall. He says, I'm going to have to go out there and back up the outfielder on balls that come off the wall. Balls will ricochet off that little wall behind third base. I have to remember to go out there and retrieve the ball there. He said the cutoffs and relays aren't important to left field because it's so short. But it's important to right field to be able to get out there and help out the, the infielder. So he knows all about playing shortstop here in this ballpark. See Mookie Betts doing some groundskeeping over at first base. Betts is eight for eight in steal attempts this season. He's not been thrown out. R.A. Dickey has not had a stolen base against him in his last 27 starts. He's so quick. He does a good job of holding runners, varying his times to home. And he barely picks up that front leg and gets rid of the ball very quickly. R.A. is a great athlete. And he really understands how to hold the ball, make the runner at first get anxious, and he'll change up his release times. And he's very quick to first. Petroya hits it on the ground. One play, that's for Travis to go to first. Betts advances into scoring position. Petroya is out 4 3 on the ground out. Trying to sneak one through the right side. That's been some improvement from Pedroia this year, hitting the ball the other way. This is such a tough lineup that hits you in the first inning. They've scored 55 runs in the first inning, the most in baseball. Even Ari Dickey had trouble in the first inning, his last start here back on April 15th. One out for Xander Bogarts. He takes his strike. In that start on April 15th, Dickey had two outs and nobody on in the first inning and ended up giving up three runs to Boston. Bogarts had a base hit. Ortiz drove him in with a double. Then Hanley Ramirez struck out. 
but reached first base on the pass ball. And Travis Shaw had a two run double. You know what makes them so tough is the diversity at the top of their lineup. They've got some power. They've got some right handed hitters that can hit the ball all over the field. They've got left handed power. They can run. They've got high average. I mean, they, they come after you. It's a lot like the Blue Jays last year when they would strike early in ball games. And they've got some depth to their to their offense. You see, Xander Bogarts leads the American League in hitting, and Victor Martinez, and two more Red Sox, David Ortiz and Jackie Bradley, in the top five. They have three of the top four hitters are in this Red Sox lineup tonight. And Xander Bogarts, since the start of last season, he has more hits than anybody in baseball 275 hits over that span. And oh, for good measure. He's got a 26 game hits. Yeah. Yeah. He got that last night. He had a bases loaded single off the top of the wall at Camden Yards thought it was a, a home run. So he could only get a single out of it. Two and two. I think he gets him to pop up. We have seen this from Bogarts in the past how he will battle and battle with two strikes foul pitches off and then force the pitcher into a mistake. I think that was the undoing if you will of Ari Dickey in the last game he pitched against the Red Sox last Sunday. Remember he had the no hitter into the sixth inning. There was one at bat where there was an 11 pitch at bat. Then there was also an eight pitch at bat. He just couldn't finish off that sixth inning. The Red Sox can be very scrappy at the plate. Ground ball. Barney will have to hurry. Oh what a play. Darwin Barney making his first start at shortstop here in Fenway was very patient feeling it didn't rush the throw and threw a strike to first. You know what I did not think he had any chance at getting the run over first base. I thought his best chance might be over to third base with Betts moving up but once he corrals that ball he gets enough on a strong arm over to first base to get the out. Barney's making his sixth start at shortstop, but he was a natural shortstop all through high school and college and signed as a shortstop. So he is very used to playing that position. He's flawless. He's been flawless at shortstop this year. David Ortiz riding a 10 game hit streak. Look at those numbers. Ortiz, 40 years old, has. Announced his retirement at the end of this season and everybody continues to scratch their head and say why. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Especially when you're 40. I know he's making it look easy but it's hard to get ready every day. He found a couple balls off his foot up in Toronto missed a day on Sunday did not play in that game against Sticky on Sunday. Yeah he was in the original lineup against R.A. but then right before game time he was a scratch. He likes hitting against R.A. He likes hitting against anybody. Yeah, well, the way he's swinging <laughs> it right now, you got to be player, right? I don't care who's pitching right now. Ortiz against Dickey, 10 for 36, but he's hit three home runs against the knuckleballer. One and two. Off the glove. Here comes Betts. He's going to score. That ball gets away from Toley, and that's the challenge for a knuckleball catcher it moves so much you got to run it just 90 feet away and it just tipped off his glove that looked like one of the quick pitches right there that R.A. will use especially against the Red Sox hitters that have a high leg kick watch him come set wind up and go and that one just goes off the glove the 11th pass ball charge to Josh Tolley and now Ortiz gets hit by a pitch Dickey wants the appeal at third asking for the swing. But Ortiz is hit by that pitch. He got hit by a pitch from Marcus Stroman that hit him in the foot that held him out of that game. One more time the knuckleball. Got him right on the wrist. Mm, exposing those hands you want to turn in and that time he turns right into the ball exposing that hand. Looked like he got hit right in the wrist. Well, you just feel the outside edge of your forearm and feel where that bone is. That bone is real close to the surface, obviously. And 
then you got all the small bones in that wrist and they're taking their time to make sure he's OK before they allow him to take first. Well there's no padding there. There's nothing to absorb the shock of that ball hitting you. Looked like they touched the area that was really tender to him. Yeah he's going to stay in the game. Obviously he can run the bases right now and they'll determine the extent of that injury when he gets back in the dugout. So Boston has cut into the lead. They score a run on the pass ball. That lead off walk to Mookie Betts comes all the way around to score. 2 1 Blue Jays now Hanley Ramirez. These are the challenges of having a knuckleballer. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you take the good and you take the bad. The good is that the ball's been moving all over the place. Unfortunately for the Blue Jays, with a runner at third base and two outs, it moved just a little bit too much. Hanley Ramirez, the first baseman, takes a first pitch strike. Ball on the strike now. Ramirez batting 291 for the season. Home runs and numbers are down from a year ago. He has just four home runs. Miles this one straight back in our direction. Everybody's jumping out of the window trying to catch that one all around us, huh? You want it that bad? Hanley's been struggling a little bit. It's been a long time since he's had an extra base hit. I think you'd like to keep it that way. This series will run the total to 13 games the Blue Jays will have played the Red Sox so far this season. They're at five and five for the first ten. Seems like we've been playing them every other series, doesn't it? They were here the second week of April for a four-game wraparound series. Maybe it's because we played them those two games before the season started in Montreal. Yeah. Blue Jay fans and Red Sox fans start to whoop things up here. And it's the first inning. <laughs> it could be a fun weekend. It's going to be a really fun weekend. I mentioned that Hanley Ramirez has not had an extra base hit since May 15th. He did that against Houston, had a couple of doubles, and that's been in. Has not been able to drive the ball. 2 2 pitch down and away. It's a full count. So David Ortiz, who was hit by a pitch, he's at first, and Smoke will play behind him, play off the bag. So we got Dickey's attention now. Ortiz will get a running start. It's always important in this big, spacious ballpark. There goes Ortiz, ball four, second walk of the inning. So the Red Sox. Have had three base runners, two walks, and a hit batter. And they have scored a run. Haven't got the ball out of the infield yet. And they've cut the lead in half. Well, here's the man that drove in two back in April against Dickey in the first inning. Travis Shaw hit a double to deep right center. He was eventually caught in a rundown trying to advance from second to third to end the inning. But the Red Sox scored three runs with two outs. They are threatening to do the same thing tonight. Looked like he was going to be out of the inning if they could have got Ortiz. Been a long inning for Dickey. He's thrown 29 pitches already. Popped up. Right out in front of home totally gets out in front and makes the catch that'll end the inning. But the Red Sox get one back we'll go to the second to one Blue Jays.
free agent after spending time with the Blue Jays and signed with the Boston Red Sox. And you look at his numbers through the first 11 starts of the season. He got off to a rough start, but Pat, lately things have turned around for him. Yeah, his pitches per innings are down. Every, everything has been down. He made a slight adjustment to his uh, his windup, to his mechanics. He's raising his hands just a little bit higher, and I think his leg kick isn't is a little bit higher also. His leg and his hands are working together, so he's getting a little bit more on his fastball. He's had some big strikeout games. He had a 12 strikeout game against Houston that started this nice little run for him. He beat Houston. He beat Kansas City. He beat Colorado. And he had that no decision against the Blue Jays when he pitched into the seventh, gave up two earned runs. That's been it. But you can see he's got a little bit more power to his windup. Curveball's been better, too. It's really interesting that Pedroia kind of picked up on something where the timing was off between his hands moving and his leg kick, and he's sorted that out and since then over those last four starts he's pitched well. Devin Travis has the count in his favor, two balls and no strikes. Now it's three, you know. Price is 30 years old. He'll turn 31 in August, and boy, what a big part of the Blue Jays' success down the stretch he was last year. He was a uh, what you call an ace, a guy who stops losing streaks. And he's trying to stop a losing streak right now for the Boston Red Sox. Ooh, Travis almost threw the bat aside. It's a late call by the home plate umpire Chris Conroy. Full count to the leadoff man here in the second. Kevin Pilar will bat next. Strike three call. Travis called out on that fastball. Check with the home plate umpire, making sure it was on the corner. He thought it was the wide one, and so did John Gibbons. I think that look right there tells it all. It's a cutter that according to the home plate umpire catches the outside part of the plate. Devin Travis thinks it goes around the plate. That looked like it cut around the plate yeah. like it cut after it passed the plate. One down Kevin Pilar he takes his strength. Strike two. We were just talking about Price you know, is an ace and, and he stops losing streaks. He has lost two or more starts in a row just six times in his career. Think about that. Only six times in all of the games that he has pitched that he has lost two in a row. And he's only lost three in a row twice in his career in 2011 and 2013. Changeup misses downstairs. It's two balls and two strikes. One thing I can see that's dramatically different for Price is how quick he's working. You remember he was always one of the slowest pitchers in baseball, but boy, he's getting the ball quickly. And maybe Pedroia said, "Hey, man, you're taking too long. Yeah, you're putting us to sleep. Let's go. <laughs> Work just a little bit quicker." Two-two pitch. Pilar hits a fly ball to right. No problem for Mookie Betts. He is there makes the catch to down. Home hardware and building center locations. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Beautiful evening here on a Friday night in Boston. Darwin Barney, boy, what a contributor he has been lately. Playing second, now filling in at short. And he's done a terrific job, and he's earned the right to play more. Look at those numbers. Yeah, he's got a five game hitting streak. He's got that average up to 344. He's just spraying the ball all over the ballpark. To right field or to left field. He's reached base in 10 of his last 18 plate appearances. And batting 370 over his last 19 games. Price falls behind again. Now it's 3 0. Oh. 
case you're just joining us Edwin Encarnacion hit a two run home run in the first the Red Sox got one back on a pass ball by Josh Tolley it's a two one ball game ball four Darwin Barney draws a two hour walk. So Josh Tolley the catcher isn't this funny how often this works out where Dickey because of where he is in the rotation will line up against a number one or number two pitcher totally doesn't play but once a week and he ends up facing Price and Scherzer and Verlander and all the <laughs> tough pitchers Home <laughs> Gardner Kershaw sale those are some of the guys that he has faced uh, I was asking him about that today and he said originally Dickey was scheduled to throw tomorrow this is chopped off home plate. Bogarts takes it in front of Shaw and that ends the innings. Andrew Bogarts, a very aggressive play at short. Pulley grounds up. We'll go to the bottom of the second. 2 1 Jays. Day. And he was saying, yes, it is very difficult to do it on the road, but it is something that everyone on the team is really starting to take notice to. In fact, the team has a nutritionist, a woman by the name of Leslie Bonsi, who can talk with guys, and she spent a lot of time during spring training, if particular guys wanted to go on specific diets. Jose said, it's no longer just a matter of what supplements you take. It's about wanting to know what is in the food you eat. Even if it's something as simple as a piece of chicken, they want to know what is in it. And Jose Bautista says a lot of the teammates are starting to follow suit. Everyone realizes now how important diet and nutrition is to becoming a professional athlete. And guys, I want to throw this back to you. In your playing days, how much was nutrition and diet a part of your everyday lifestyle? Well, it was a big part of mine. I had to make sure I had the right kind of bologna to eat. <laughs> as long as it had peanut butter, I was eating it in the clubhouse, right? They didn't yeah. have any of that no, stuff. There was never any chefs or menus or nutritionists. You know, you're lucky if you got a hockey puck, a little hamburger at the end of a ball game or something. They had candy bars yeah. in the clubhouse. That that was basically sunflower it. seeds, maybe a bag of potato yeah. chips once in a while. But like to eat, eat. No. We never did. Never had anything like that. And now these players, and you know, they spend a lot of time at the ballpark, so they eat sometimes three meals a day mm -hmm. here. Jackie Bradley Jr. grounds it to second. Travis gobbles it up and throws him out. But you know what? It is a big part of what's going on in the sports world today, not just in baseball, but around the globe and in, in every sport. And it's important, obviously. Jose Bautista, he's 35 years old, so he understands the value of taking good care of yourself and keeping your body ready to perform. And they've done studies as to when you should eat, what time you should eat, when you're going to get the most out of the food you ingest before the game. And, you know, like you said, you and I, we'd have maybe sliced oranges or watermelon or something like that but that was about it that that was it and it was a treat to come to then sky dome they had a mcdonald's right in there there were more mcdonald's bags in our clubhouse <laughs> after they moved into <laughs> the sky dome back then rogers center christian vasquez grounds it to short barney throws him out to ground ball outs but it makes a lot of sense doesn't it uh, the longer you can play the more you can take care of your body the longer you can play the more money you can make the more fun you can have right well and you and i we travel with them as well and the food on the airplane is conscientious they make sure it's good food and quality food for them after the games between flights 
And you know, you know me, I try to eat as good a food as possible. And you know, when you have an evening off and you go out to eat, you're gonna have a good meal, go to a good restaurant, spend the extra money. Partner, you don't just eat. You are the best eater I've ever seen. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you you are the you know you you only have the best. That's all I'm gonna say. I like to eat good food. <laughs> Pop tip off the bat of Blake Swire. Quick inning for R.A. Dickey. Good talk about the food. Members, it is that time of the night. Here is your daily code to log into My Blue Jays. It is MBJ7739. You enter that code and you'll earn My Blue Jays points simply for watching the broadcast. The entry box can be found on your My Blue Jays homepage. You have to enter tonight's code by 1159, but we will have a new one for you tomorrow. Let's now get you back upstairs to Buck and Tabby. Thank you very much, Barry Davis. And you can see there are Blue Jay fans everywhere here at Fenway Park and a great weekend. And I think everybody knows that this is a great spot to watch. Boy, Price got hit hard by that line drive. Pedroia can't make the play. I think he got hit on his pitching hand. And they're going to come out and have a look at it. Bautista is aboard with an infield hit. The comebacker line shot right back at him, and he tried to protect himself, but I think he got hit on the hand. Yeah, he's saying, you can see him, I'm all right. He is not showing any emotion at all. This ball is a laser right back to the mound. Did the glove deflect that? I'm not sure. He tried to just cover up, protect himself. Pedroia couldn't make the barehanded play. And Bautista's got a single. Might have hit him on the glove and the hip. Hot shot back through the box. So Bautista's aboard. That's his 20th hit against David Price. He also has six home runs against him. Josh Donaldson walked and scored on the Encarnacion two run homer in the first. You know, this cannot be any fun for a left handed pitcher to face these three guys in this ballpark. How do you get them out? Where, where do you pitch them? And that's why Donaldson drew the walk, and they have tried to stay away from most of these guys. Josh has worn out Boston pitching all season long to the tune of a 366 average. I was talking to the Kansas City scout last year and, and he was telling me that whenever you play the Blue Jays you always have to know where these three guys are in the lineup when they're coming up when they're going to be hitting because they're so dangerous and just like that here's Bautista over at first base and now you got Donaldson and Encarnacion to deal with. Price throws him a change up and what makes it even tougher you got to deal with this ballpark. I mean, you make one mistake, a fly ball, and it's four to one. Yeah, it doesn't take much to get it up on that top of the green monster and put it into the seats. 
Nobody out. Baptiste did first. A ball and two strikes to Josh Donaldson. Way outside. I don't know why a right handed batter who's got some power, who's got a bat that's very quick, why they wouldn't just get on top of home plate here and just pull everything. Force the pitcher to throw you a lot of fastballs. Mm -hmm. 2 2 pitch. Fouled off. There's a fastball. Just couldn't get around them. Donaldson is playing in his 20th game here at Fenway. He's got a 348 average in this ballpark. But has hit just two home runs. He has four doubles, two triples, and two homers coming into this game with 69 at bats. So he mentioned he tripled against Price back in April for that triangle in deep center field. Takes one upstairs. It's a full count. You don't run in this situation, not in this ballpark. No, not not at all. You don't want to run into outs. They're too valuable, especially where you are in the lineup. If he swings and misses with that Christian Vasquez back there, it could be a strike about throw mount. So you just plant yourself over there at first base and let him swing away. He's running. Fouled off. See, that's why we're sitting up here. <laughs> <laughs> David Price was thinking the same thing. He wasn't even looking at Bautista. No, he got a running start. Yes, he did. He timed him up beautifully. Now you might see a little change up right here from the Red Sox. Look at that frown on Gibby's face. Maybe he was running on his own. <laughs> <laughs> Another 3-2 pitch to Donaldson. Nobody out. Blue Jays have a 2-1 lead. Bryce took too long that time and Donaldson was asked and time was granted. He's to running again. See who was covering on that? That's interesting. Shortstop was covering. Yeah. Must have been a cutter outside. They figured that it was going to be hit to the right side of the infield. The infielders, they will look at the catcher's sign and then determine who has the coverage. Josh Donaldson at the plate. I didn't think the shortstop. Will be covering on that steal attempt. Bautista runs again, another foul. That time it was Pedroia. So they're changing up, obviously, according to the pitches. And now Bogarts wants to talk to Pedroia a little bit. So they're having a chat around second base. Pedroia, he's the field general out there. He's seen it all. He has lived it all 11 years in the big leagues. Now the 3 2 pitch, Bautista's. He's been moving on every 3 2 pitch. we go back to first with Price coming over. Blue Jays have three hits already. Jose's got a big lead again. This time he dove back in ahead of the throw. This is really interesting. He certainly has divided Price's attention. Yes. Maybe that'll help Josh Donaldson to get a, a mistake. Bautista bluffed and held. Ball is popped in the air. Betts waits on it. Donaldson is retired. Drive of the game is brought to you by the all-new Honda Civic, the 2016 North American.
car of the year. Earliest drive of the game ever, and there's a reason. Watch this. First inning, watch where this ball off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion goes to. If he stood at the plate, I don't think he could hit the flagpole, but he does. And it bounces back down onto the playing field. Edwin Encarnacion with the drive of the game off the flagpole here at Fenway. That is a monster shot, and had it not hit the flagpole, it would have gone straight out of the ballpark on the Lansdowne Street. That's where the big boys go. Home run number 11 for Edwin. He has RBIs now in eight of his last nine games. And he's extended his hits streak to six. Four multi RBI games. He's the kind of guy when he's hot. He's hot now. This is another hit to left field. Bautista is going to go to third. Here's the throw from Swihart. They got him. Blake Swihart starting in left field for just the 12th time. Makes a nice play. Goes over, cuts it off. He's got a strong arm and he's very athletic and he picks up his first outfield assist. And the Red Sox have said that Blake Swihart is going to help this team. He's not hitting right now, but he's a good defender. Watch him play this ball off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion backhand. Realizes that Bautista is trying to go first and third and throws a one hop strike right to Travis Shaw for the out at third base. That uh, kind of defense is going to help any pitcher. Boy, it sure does. And it looked like that was a first and third situation all the way. Bautista is a good runner, but Fryhart made a good play on it. Edwin, when he's hot, he can carry a ball club. And it looks like he's starting to heat up. Edwin's two for two. Michael Saunders got a single his first time up. How about the job that Michael Saunders has done against left handed pitching this year? It's impressive. He's got five home runs against left handed pitching. Hitting nearly 300 against him, and he has done a terrific job staying on the pitches. It doesn't make any difference who he's facing. Pulls the ball when he has to, hits the ball the other way when he needs to. Just under 300 now with that hit off of Price. Two balls and a strike to Saunders. Tough pitch up and in. He swings right through it. Two and two, two outs. Encarnacion at first. One of the numbers we were talking about, 296 with that base hit his first time up against lefty pitching. Inside, full count. Two outs. Smoke will bat next if Saunders can reach base. Andy Ramirez, the first baseman, backing up behind Encarnacion. Hit him. Inside pitch, and that one catches Saunders. Two aboard, two outs. Let's check it with Jamie Campbell. Well, 
Well, the division is going to beat up on each other. That's for sure. This weekend, the Blue Jays are here in Boston, while the Yankees are in Baltimore. And Tillman has been pitching very well. He yeah. had a great month. He was five and zero oh in a month of May. baldy has been great too. Mark Teixeira started that game and had to be pulled. Jeff Snyder is now in to play first base. Texas has been dealing with those neck spasms. Well, there are a lot of injuries, a lot of serious injuries, and they just talk about Hunter Pence. He tore the tendon off the bone and is going to have surgery on his hamstring. So he's going to be out an extensive period of time. Sounds like David Wright's going to miss an up to awful eight lot weeks. of time. Up to eight weeks they're talking about with this problem. Herniated disc in his mm -hmm. neck. Two on, two outs. Justin Smoke hit into a double play his first time up. Smoke has played every day, and because of that, he's swinging the bat better from both sides of the plate. 267 against lefty pitching. You know, we were talking about uh, Hanley Ramirez at first base. He's one of four first basemen to play at least 30 games without an error. Here's the other one right there. Justin Smoke has not made an error at first base. Smoke's a terrific defender. He's a natural first baseman, of course. Hanley Ramirez, great athlete. He played shortstop for the majority of his big league career, so the transition shouldn't be that difficult for him. Smoke's got a battle. He's behind 0 and 2. Encarnacion at second. Saunders at first. Line drive into center. Jackie Bradley will take it shoulder high. Smoke hit it hard. But right to the center field. The Blue Jays strand a pair. We'll go to the bottom of the third. 2 1 Jays. Players in all of baseball got off to a mediocre start, but boy, since May 9th, he's been on fire. Blue Jays have had his number, but everybody else is having nothing but problems with Mookie Betts. He's not just getting singles and coming around to score, he is driving the ball. He's got the extra bases. There's the on base percentage and the slugging percentage, a 347 average. And earlier this week, he became the first Red Sox leadoff batter to go deep three times in one game. So He's just not about singles and scoring runs. He's about driving the ball out of the ballpark now. And lead off walk and scored the Red Sox run in the first. Give you an idea how good the Blue Jays have pitched him. Mookie Betts batting 140 coming into this game. 10 games, six for 43 with one extra base hit. Little chopper is going to be a tough one for Donaldson. Bare hands in time. What a play. 
I tell you what, he rolled that ball around in his hand until he got a grip on it, and he made a terrific play. I didn't think he had a chance. Not with the speed of Mookie Betts down that first base line. He was playing deep, respecting the line drive ability of Betts. Look how deep he is and how far he's got to come. But I'll tell you what, we have talked about this in the past. He is one of the best at coming in and fielding that ball on the run with his bare hand and throwing and throwing accurately and strongly over to first base. Yeah, I mean, his defense gets overlooked. He's a terrific defender, and that's another example of it. Pedroia hits that one off his foot. Tell you, all around baseball, this might be the golden era for third baseman. There are tons of them when you think of Manny Machado. Now, I know he's playing shortstop right now for Baltimore, but Nolan Arenado out in Colorado is fantastic. Evan Longoria, Josh Donaldson. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Chris Bryant, when he plays third base for the Chicago Cubs, is another one. Yeah, there's an awful lot of good third basemen right now who are great two-way players. Dickey ahead of Pedroia, 0-2. Oh, there's a line drive club by Barney. Darwin Barney already a couple of fine defensive plays making his first start at shortstop here in Fenway Park throwing some stars out there tonight for the Blue Jays defense first Josh Donaldson to get out number one and this looked like a sure base hit by Pedroia up in the air goes Darwin Barney to take away a base hit times it perfectly you can see he was moving on that play and then has to come back to his right to make that play. Now he took a step towards his left and the ball came back to his right. He was able to make the adjustment. Two out. Sander Bogarts takes a strike. Dustin Pedroia. Now he's got a terrific sense of humor. The other day he was asked about Bogarts saying, man, Bogarts such a good player. He's just 23 years old. Pedroia says, yeah, when I was 23, we were in the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> and just very matter of fact, we'll see. He's a good player, and Pedroia loves him, of course. But he just pointed out, yeah, you know, there have been good young players here in the past. <laughs> but, but isn't that Dustin Pedroia yeah. all about winning? Oh, absolutely. You know, it doesn't Listen. matter about all the individual accomplishments. It's about what has your team done? One and two. Bogarts takes it. Take a look at this foul ball off the bat of Bogarts, and it goes right up into that second deck. Nice play. One hand, a la Josh Donaldson. <laughs> <laughs> He's been watching Josh, hasn't he? Threw three balls and two strikes, two outs. Bogarts coming into this game has 415 hits in his young career. Dickey wanted that one. He was headed to the dugout. Bogarts takes ball forward. Third walk issued by Dickey. It comes with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Ari thought he finally got him. Thought he slipped that knuckleball by him, but it was low. Now he's got to deal with Ortiz. Big swing from Ortiz, and he's behind 0-1. The Red Sox have had four base runners. They haven't had a hit yet. Three walks and a hit batter. Ortiz got hit by a pitch in the first. But he was one of two Red Sox stranded in the first. He is right on top of the plate. And he's looking to open up and lift that ball to right field. 
We were talking in the opening about we hope the knuckleball is moving. That's why, because there's there's really no place to pitch David Ortiz with the knuckleball. You can't say, well, I want to throw it up and in, or I want to go down and away. You just hope it's moving by the time it gets to home plate. Well, Ortiz can stand right on top of the plate because obviously it's not a high velocity pitch. I hope he gets something he could pull to the right side of the field. The appeal down to third is denied by Ron Copa, third base umpire. Three and one. One thing Ortiz will look for here is the knuckleball. He doesn't expect to get a fastball, nor should he. No. Y you can't. You can't try and trick him and throw a little sinker because he can yank that ball to right field too. That would be a much easier option for Ari Dickey if he could pick both reds. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't have to throw another pitch to Big Poppy. He takes another close one. Vicky wants a new baseball. A couple of two out walks here in the third. Hanley Ramirez will step to the plate. Two on and two outs. He walked his first time up. Vicky has now walked four in the game. That's what I mean about the Red Sox, how they they'll change their approach against R.A. Dickey. Sometimes they'll be very aggressive with them. Sometimes they'll try and shoot the ball to right field. Tonight it looks like he's trying to be, they are trying to be very patient with him and make him get that knuckleball in the strike zone. Andy Ramirez, he goes after the first pitch and rips it off the wall down the third baseline. Yeah, this is a real challenge for Tolly and Dickey. You think, well, maybe I can sneak a fastball by these guys, but you've got to stick with that knuckleball in yeah. this ballpark. I think they know it. I think the Red Sox know it. Now, you can change speeds with the knuckleball. I, I think that's something that would work, and we have seen R.A. do that in the past. I think you can change your your speed towards home. You can you can hurry up your, your motion and, and quick pitching with nobody on base. But I don't think you can try and slip fastballs by these guys. Down. That's the first ball of the bat. It's one and two to Ramirez. Dickey got two fine defensive play and support to start this inning. Lukey Betts was thrown out on a good play by Donaldson, and Pedroia lined out. To Darwin Barney. Ground ball. Travis at second will look to second and throws to first. A little miscommunication there, but it doesn't create a problem. Dickey is through the third. We'll go to the fourth. Blue Jays and R.A. Dickey having trouble with that strike zone.
Finals continue tomorrow, and if you're the San Jose Sharks, you're really hoping home ice advantage definitely gives them that. Over the first couple of games, it's been all Pittsburgh. They lead the series two games to none. Game three from San Jose goes tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on CBC. Bye. Thank you very much, Barry Davis, and what a shot of Fenway Park. Beautiful evening here in Boston. David Price has thrown 55 pitches. He's allowed two runs on four hits to the Blue Jays, and he trails two to one. For the Jays, Devin Travis, Kevin Pillar, and Darwin Barney bat here in the fourth. Chop toward third. Big hop for Shaw. Long throw, and he bounces it, and it goes into the Red Sox dugout. For Shaw, that'll be air number seven on the season, and Devin Travis will end up at second base. You know, it was Devin Travis who hit the ball to Travis Shaw at Rogers Center. That ended up being the game winner down the left field line when Shaw grabbed it, threw over to first base. Hanley Ramirez couldn't come up with that one, and the Blue Jays had that improbable 10-9 to win against Kimbrell. This one a much easier play right at him, and he just spikes it right into the ground. He's got plenty of time. Might have rushed it just a little bit. No chance for Hanley to pick that one. So let's see if the Blue Jays can now take advantage of this error. Red Sox, like I said, came into this game third in the American League in fielding percentage. They have only committed 26 errors all season long. Kevin Pillar takes one inside for ball one. Shaw's making his 44th start at third base. Where she's taken over. Pablo Sandoval lost the job and then they found a shoulder problem. He has had sur surgeries out for the season. Pilar cuts on and fouls it back. Ball on a strike. Blue Jays got to add some runs here. They have a 2 1 lead. And when Encarnacion had a two run homer in the first off, David Price got to take advantage of this air by Sean. Take advantage and move that runner at minimum. Yeah, get that runner over to third base. Line drive to left. That'll get down. Swihart plays in on a couple of hops. Travis goes to third. First and third. Nobody out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you very much and that's a good sign with Vincent Velasquez on the mound for the Phillies. He is allowed just one hit and struck out six through three and two thirds. Phillies are playing good baseball. I spoke to John McLaren yesterday their coach. He said we got some kids that are getting after yep. it. and they've got some kids in the farm system that are coming too. Darwin Barney walked his first time up. Nobody out. Barney had some good at bats against David Price last Sunday. He was robbed in the alley by Blake Swihart on a diving catch in left center and then hit a line drive straight away to left field right at Swihart. And then later on, he broke his bat and got a single. Yeah, he ended up having a, a multi hit game. You can see that number. He's hitting over 400 with runners in scoring position. Ground ball. This could be two. Bogarts to Pedroia. It is a double play. Travis comes in to score no RBI for Barney but the Blue Jays get the run. You have to take advantage when good teams give you the opportunity. Devin Travis hits that ground ball to start the inning. And he comes around to score the third run of the night for the Blue Jays. Got to figure out a way to get him in. Kevin Pilar with a single he's erased on the double play Devin Travis scores. Three one Blue Jays. Second double play the Blue Jays have bounced into tonight. Josh told me to catch it. He bounced it off home plate. 
a high chopping ball that Sander Bogarts made a nice play on to end the second. Oh and two. Three caught, totally can't believe it. Thought it was off the plate inside. He's been watching that strike zone all night long. Price gets his second strike out of the night, but the Blue Jays add a run. In this game to help protect this 3 1 lead. You know, when you're facing the best hitting team in the American League, Boston Red Sox, you have to make every play to help beat them. Darwin Barney in the first inning takes a hit away from Bogarts. Josh Donaldson takes a hit away from Mookie Betts. And then Darwin Barney one more time off the bat of Dustin Pedroia with that line drive. So the left side of the infield making the plays tonight for the Blue Jays. I know what you were laughing at. You were laughing at Donaldson jumping with Barney yes. to catch that liner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like all athletes do, right? It, it happens all it. the time, yeah. You see a line drive of one of your teammates and everybody on infield jumps with them to get up a little higher. <laughs> so this is Travis Shaw leaning off the fourth and he hits that one right off the end of the bat. You know, you pay so much attention to bets. Pedroia, Bogarts, Ortiz, Ramirez. Travis Shaw has had the best season against the Blue Jays so far, driving in runs. Shaw has 10 RBIs in 10 games coming into this series. 333 average, hit a couple of home runs, four doubles, and 10 ribbies. Cooled off just a little bit. He was up over 300 just last week when they were in Rogers Center. So. Run into a little bit of a, a cold streak, but he's still a tough out. He hasn't cooled off. Mookie Betts just took all the hits <laughs> <laughs> and all the power, too, right? Full count. And he loses, and that's five walks now issued by Dickey. The all-new Honda Civic, now available with turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Beautiful night in Boston. Jackie Bradley Jr., the owner of that 29-game hit streak in May, was named the American League Player of the Month for the month of May. It's the first Red Sox player to win a monthly award since Dustin Bedroya in 2011. He was player of the month in July that season. And he's a new dad. Became a pop. Just returned today, coming off the paternity list as he and his wife welcome in their first child. Have a month. 
That is a great <laughs> month, isn't it? <laughs> uh huh. He uh, he has really improved as a hitter. And I'm not talking about oh, because he's got great numbers, the home runs, the batting average, and the RBIs. The Red Sox were hoping, hey, if you play great defense, if you can hit 250 and hit 10 home runs, driving 50, and play great defense, we got a great player here. Foul ball. Travis will go to first. Bradley's retired. Shaw advances to second. But what he has done is he, he has almost reached those numbers here in the first half of the season. And, and for him, it just starts with the lower half. He, he's got his lower half, I think, under control. We can talk about that a little bit more when he comes up there. But those are some of the adjustments a young hitter has to make. So Travis Shaw now in scoring position. Christian Vasquez, the catcher, grounded out to short his first time up. He throws a first pitch strike. Ari Dickey, we mentioned how he's turned things around over his last six starts. He's held the opponents to a 214 batting average. Last time, Boston was held hitless. They got a shot at third. Travis Shaw made a mistake. They get him in a rundown. They tag him out, and the Vasquez hitter has to stay at first. Well, that's a big mistake. Dickey's a terrific fielder, former Gold Glove winner, and he did exactly what he needed to do. Catch the ball and then turn and take a look at that runner. If you're the runner at second base, you got to make sure that ball gets by the pitcher. It doesn't. And the Blue Jays execute this rundown to perfection because they get the runner and then Christian Vasquez, the batter, can only get the first base. Dickey did it perfectly. He gave it to Donaldson right away. Shaw was out of no man's land, yes. a real big base running blunder here in the fourth. Blake Swihart goes after the first pitch. Easy inning for Ari Dickey. The leadoff walk doesn't factor in. We've played four, three, one Blue Jays. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Live on your phone and tablet with the MLB.com at bat app. Customize at bat to feature the Blue Jays and stay up to the moment at any moment with scores, news, live game video highlights, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. This gentleman is on it right now, Buck, seeing how the Jays are doing. He's working hard at it, he that's is. for sure. Jose Bautista will lead things off. He singled off price. I mean, literally off price <laughs> his last time up. Hit a line drive right back to the mound. Five ball, not deep. 
Jackie Bradley Jr. going back. He's got plenty of room. And Batista is retired. Take a look at the American League ERA leaders since 2009 among the starters. David Price is in some pretty lofty company. Yeah, that's the who's who right now in the American League for, for starting pitching. King Felix and Chris Sale, one and two, and right behind them, David Price, followed by Justin Verlander and the very underrated Jose Quintana. You know what David Price is? Is he is a workhorse. He's a guy that you can count on every fifth day that he's going to take his start and he's going to get you deep into a ball game. This is his 225th career start in 177 of them. Now he has thrown 100 pitches. And you say, well, what's the big deal about 100 pitches? You would figure somewhere along the line he'd have a bad game and he'd go two innings or three innings and get knocked out of the game before he, he throws 100 pitches in a game. There's his record, his numbers, his ERA, his complete game, but 176 starts with at least 100 pitches thrown. So he's going to go deep in the game. He's going to he's going to give you an effort every five days. He's been a perfectly consistent pitcher. And for that, you have to pay a lot of money on the free agent market. Yep. Yeah, and Boston was willing to do that because they were missing an, an ace. He has averaged more than 100 pitchers per start every year since 2010. Isn't it interesting how things play out? The Boston Red Sox had an ace, and they let him go, John Lester. Mm -hmm. And he would have stayed probably for half the money that Price signed for. Well, what did he sign for? In, uh, he signed for, I think, 100 and something. 75, maybe 180, yeah. something. Uh, yeah. 100 and something. Yeah, million. Yeah. 50, 60 million here or there. Who's counting? Well, the Red Sox messed up when they lowballed him. That was the problem. Yeah. But he would have stayed here. He was sure. perfectly suited to pitch here. But that was a different management team than the one that committed to David Price. Of course, the one that committed to David Price knew him well, having been the GM in Detroit. In Detroit, when they traded for him and then traded him. There he is right there. Dave Dombrowski. Is that insider trading? <laughs> they traded him to <laughs> Toronto, and then, of course, he got let go, and then Price becomes a free agent, so he brings him here to Boston. Pretty bright move. Yeah. you got to build your staff around somebody, right? you got to start somewhere. Donaldson walks for a second time tonight, and that'll bring Edwin Encarnacion to the plate, and Edwin's starting to heat up. He's two for two tonight with a two-run home run in the first. He now has 296 RBIs as a Blue Jay. How about two more with one swing of the bat. He is starting to heat up his right. You can see he is locked in on David Price. Edwin has two hits against Price. Bautista has one. They have five of the three of the five hits. There's a pitch inside. We haven't seen yeah. that. He has to pitch inside. I think. I, I think you can't just neglect one side of the plate just because these right-handed batters are power hitters. I, I think you have to pitch in and then away, and up and in, and down and away. I think if you do that, you're going to be successful. And he can do that. One last number I want to throw at you how valuable he is and how good he is. David Price led the American League last year in strike throwing percentage. He had the best strike throwing percentage, so you know he's going to be around the plate. But his stuff is so good. Had a big year last year. Edwin asked for the appeal himself, and then Jerry Mills, the crew chief of this umpiring crew, calls him out. So he strikes out, called out for the swing. That's the first time they've retired in Connachon tonight. Then it took a check swing to get him. Three different pitches. This looked like it might have been a changeup. And Edwin held up there. Boy, that me. wasn't even close. I thought he held up. But he's called out by Jerry Meals down at first, the first base umpire. And that didn't look like he went at all. Two down now for Michael Saunders. He has singled and was hit by a pitch.
this might be a time for Donaldson to run. Everybody's playing in the shift. Price not expecting him to run. Donaldson picks his spots very well. And maybe forgets about him and just goes one, two, three, boom, home. He gave him one look. Josh is three for three. Doesn't run a lot, but he picks good times. 3-1 Blue Jays. We're in the fifth. Don't you love that angle? Gives you perspective of what a pitcher's looking at, the lead for the base runner. That's so Fenway Park, isn't it? On the ground. Shaw goes to second. That'll end in the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Ari Dickey has a two run lead over David Price. Canadian teams in the NHL, not one of them made the postseason. Now that's the bad news. The good news is, hey, the draft is coming up June 24th, and all seven teams have a chance of adding an impact player. Meet the future of your team at the 2016 NHL draft. You can watch it on Sportsnet, of course, but the Leafs with the number one pick. Yeah, that's going to be a great show, an opportunity to watch the Toronto Maple Leafs take the number one selection overall. R.A. Dickey, he is baffling the Red Sox for the second consecutive start. Yeah, just like the last time he faced him. He pitched no hit ball into the sixth inning. He didn't have a strikeout in that game until the sixth inning and he finished with one struck out the first batter in the sixth inning and gave up five straight base runners before he was knocked out. But that was the first time they got a hit was in the sixth inning. Same thing happening so far tonight. Look, he bets it's went into the seats foul. Betts hit a triple. That was the first hit of the game in the sixth inning. It came with one out in the six. That was the first hit for Boston. This time he strikes out. Three pitch strikeout. It's time to convert your big outdoor tasks into short, effortless work. Make the great outdoors even greater with Honda Power Equipment. Dustin Pedroia has ground out and lined out. He was robbed of a base hit by Darwin Barney. It's shortstop in the third. The Blue Jays bullpen is well rested and off day yesterday Sanchez pitched into the seventh on Wednesday so I spoke to Dane Johnson the bullpen coach today he said everybody is ready they're chomping at the bit they got eight guys down there and there's Justin Grilly Jason Grilly who has just joined the ball club Jason he's going to be an interesting addition to this yeah. bullpen. How about Aaron Loop warming up that elbow throwing some 
hot ice or whatever it's called nowadays on that elbow to warm it up. Which I, I'm with you, Jason Greeley is going to be a, a nice addition. He's a veteran. He came in a tough situation on Wednesday and got a big out against Beltran. Just another arm with some experience. Now, and he and Russell Martin were teammates in Pittsburgh. He's got a terrific reputation. Former number one pick of the Giants. I asked Mautista, have you ever been a teammate of Grillies? He says, no, but I've called up other people that have played with him and got raving reviews about him. Terrific competitor. Great experienced guy. Pedroia pulls it to third. Donaldson takes his time. Two away. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Well, we mentioned the four or the three Red Sox in the top four. Well, they, the fourth member of the top four in batting, Victor Martinez, coming into today's action at 337. Is he ever going to quit? I thought he'd start to slow down, <laughs> but I guess not. He's like Big Poppy. He just keeps going and going. He can flat out hit. The Castellanos, you were mentioning, great third baseman. Yeah, and there's a bunch of them. He's another one That's right another there. one. He had a tough day yesterday. Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier. Yeah, there's quite a few third basemen. Detroit, three games under 500. This has popped up into the seats. Well, back out of play. But Blue Jays will see the Tigers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in Detroit. First time these two teams will meet up this season. I think there might be some Blue Jay fans there. You bet. Great ballpark. Great rivalry. Bogarts strikes out. Another clean inning for R.A. Dickey. Three up, three down. In the fifth, we'll go to the sixth. The Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead over Boston. three times daily. Go to WestJet.com to book your flight and cheer on the Blue Jays here in Boston. WestJet, proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. So many Blue Jay fans here tonight. They're making a lot of noise, Buck, and I know a lot of them flew in this morning on that WestJet flight. Yeah, they sure did, and they made their presence known very early tonight when they did the national anthem. The national anthem singer singing the Canadian anthem forgot the words, and all the Blue Jay fans picked up Never missed a beat. They sang the rest of O Canada for him. Helped him out just a little bit. It they kind sure of messed did. up the tune just a little bit. Got too. him back <laughs> on track. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Justin Smoke leading things off here for the Blue Jays in the sixth.
Ball on a strike to the big first baseman. Smoke has hit into a double play and lined out to Jackie Bradley Jr. in center, and he hit a frozen rope into center. Oh, if Jr. Could. made a high, just high catch. He could have got that ball up. That thing would still be traveling. He was all over it. Blue Jays have won 10 of their last 13 games. It goes back to Bautista being put into that leadoff spot in Minnesota to start that four game series. And they've got every aspect of their game turned around. The starting pitch has been great all season. But during this last stretch, the bullpen has pitched very well. The bullpen is 4 and 1 over the last 13 games with a very good ERA at 356. Starting to get themselves sorted out down there. It's a lot like last year. Remember the bullpen the first two months of the season. Took them a while to find their footing. And it was in June when they really took off. Wasn't that when Brett Cecil started his uh, scoreless, scoreless streak? There's a guy that should be headed back soon after getting healthy. Cecil, get him back in that bullpen. Mm -hmm. Give him another veteran lefty. Who Storns had some good outings lately. Brian Tapera had a good inning against the Yankees on Wednesday. 2 2 pitch. A little foul at home. Blue Jays still carrying eight relievers to start this road trip. I think that's the right move in this ballpark. I mean, you, you can go through some relievers playing in Fenway Park. And what has happened because they only have three bench players, Ryan Goins has taken balls all over the place. First base, left field, short, second, third. He's had all different kinds of gloves on today during BP. Up and away is three and two. Second baseman Devin Travis reached and scored. He reached on an air and scored in the fourth. There's a base hit for Smoke. Justin is one for three. That's the sixth hit for the Blue Jays. Surprised he challenged him right there. I thought he'd throw him another change up. He got his two strikes on change up. I thought he'd go right back to it, but he challenged him. Smoke has hit the ball hard a couple of times tonight. This is a nice compact swing right here. Not a lot of movement or extra movement. He had some good swings during that at bat. Lead off single, Devin Travis. He had a ground ball to the third baseman, Travis Shaw, in the fourth inning. Shaw bounced it over to first, and it was a air on the third baseman. There's a liner in the right. Betts got a good read and takes it just high. One out. While we got a moment, we want to send our happy birthday wishes to John Neglia, who's a bat boy for the Blue Jays at home. He's having his birthday today, his 28th birthday, and he's been with the Blue Jays a long time. Yeah, he's been the, with the organization for nine years. Eight of them as the bat boy. Follows the guys religiously. So happy birthday, Johnny. Kevin Pilar, one for two. going to be into the seats down the right side. The Red Sox bullpen got beat up a bit down in Baltimore against the Orioles. They have had a tough time of late. Junichi Tozawa, Noe Ramirez both gave up two home runs in their outing last night. Red Sox are doing the same thing that the Blue Jays are doing right now. They're carrying eight relievers. They're going to go with four starters because they've got a ton of off days coming up in their schedule. So they're going to go with four starters and eight relievers to help uh, them through. That is Carl Willis, the pitching coach for the Red Sox. John Farrell wanting those extra arms in that bullpen. The Red Sox will have off Monday and Thursday next week. Then the following Monday, the 13th, they'll have an off day, and then they'll play straight through until the 30th of June. 
uh, four off days in the month of June. And in case you've missed it, Joe Kelly has been sent back to the minor leagues. The starter came off the deal. Took a no hitter into the seventh, and since then he's not had much success, and they shipped him back to Triple A. Two very bad outings, one of them against the Blue Jays. Pilar lines out to Pedroia. Well, Boston, they're top the American League East. But you look at the Boston ERA, they've had some problems in their rotation. That's all you have to look to, why they are carrying eight relievers now, because that Red Sox starters earn run average is approaching five. After David Price, they've had a lot of question marks. Rick Porcello has had times, has, has pitched well. They just got Eduardo Rodriguez back. Stephen Wright has really been the savior, I think, for the Red Sox starting pitchers. Stephen Wright, you'll see him tomorrow. He'll go up against Marcus Stroman in an afternoon game. He is five and four with a 2.45 third run average, and that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it, it did, and they're happy that it, that it did because Clay Buckles was in the starting rotation. He's now down in the bullpen. You mentioned Joe Kelly was in the starting rotation. He's now down in Triple A, so they. They've had the problems with the starters. I think the Red Sox players are learning one thing. Dave Dombrowski is not married to this roster. If he doesn't like what he sees, he's going to make changes. Mm -hmm. This is down the right side. It's slicing and it will be a foul ball off the wall. Bounce back onto the playing field. But Dave Dombrowski came over in August last year and evaluated the team, made some subtle changes, signed David Price, of course. Brought in Carson Smith to help the bullpen out, and unfortunately for Dombrowski and the Red Sox, Smith underwent Tommy John surgery. But Dave Dombrowski, he did not put this roster together, but he is certainly managing. He's it. managing, and I bet you his phone's going to get nice and warm over the next month or so, trying to find another starter. Inside corner, Barney Newitt takes a strike from David Price. Blue Jays get a leadoff single. He can't do anything with it. We'll go to the bottom of the six. The Jays are up by two. Dickey has done a number on the Red Sox so far tonight and you look what he has done in his last start through five innings he's done almost the same tonight through five innings. exactly no hits uh, five walks tonight and a couple more strikeouts and it was the sixth inning that was the inning that uh, knocked our out out of that game where he gave up three hits hit batter in a walk he had a two run lead heading into the sixth inning last Sunday. He has a two run lead heading into the sixth inning tonight. So it'll be Ortiz Ramirez and Shaw. These next three batters have been on base four times in their six plate appearances. 
Ortiz has been hit by Bitch and walked. Ramirez walked, as did Shaw. So they have three of the five walks issued by R.A. Dickey. And David Ortiz got on his first time up. He got hit by a knuckleball. R.A.'s knuckleball has been dancing, but it's been dancing out of the strike zone for the most part. And the Red Sox have been very patient with him. There's his strike. It's two and one. To give you an idea of how effective Dickey has been tonight, Boston has 10 or more hits in 17 of its last 20 home games. That's going to be a fair ball. All the way into the right field corner. That ball hit the fence and died. Bautista was ready for the carom. But Ortiz ends up at second with yet another double, his 24th of the season. They lead the world in doubles. Uh, throws that knuckleball on the inner half. And Ortiz, he's got such a classic swing. He doesn't go around the ball and yanks it foul. He stays inside the ball with his hands, and that's how he's able to keep that ball fair down the right field line. You see a lot of left-handed batters pull that ball into the stands for a foul ball. He stays inside, pulls it fair down the right field line for another extra base hit. For Ortiz, that's his 500th double as a Red Sox. He is 25 behind Ted Williams all time. Pilar is setting up for the throw to third. He's in the deep alley in right center. Ortiz tags. Here's the long throw. Off the line. Ortiz moves up. Hanley Ramirez retired on the fly ball to deep right center. Big Poppy is able to move up. He leads the American League in extra base hits with that double that you were just talking about. And now he's 90 feet away. I thought Pilar had a great shot at getting him, but the ball kept carrying. And then the throws offline. Ortiz can make it into third base. 500 doubles as a Red Sox. That's impressive. Wow, it's impressive because Ted Williams has 25 more. You mentioned Williams in many of the sentences with David Ortiz. And he's right there with Williams in a lot of the categories. Travis Shaw takes a first pitch strike. One out man at third. Shaw has popped to the catcher and walked. We might see one of those quick pitches. Right back to Dickey. He looks Ortiz back at third. Shaw's retired. Another good defensive play. Dickey. Had that one gotten past him, Ortiz would have come in to score. You know what he does, uh, R.A., when he lets go to the ball? He's in outstanding position to field a grounder. He throws the ball. He's in an athletic position. Watch when he finishes this off. Athletic position. He's right there. That's an easy play for him. That's a single to center field. But Dickey feels his position well, turns and checks out that runner. And now is a chance to pitch around that leadoff double. Jackie Bradley Jr. takes a strike. Bradley is grounded out twice to the second baseman. Tried to check and went around. 0 and 2. Jason Grilly loosening up for the Blue Jays. He faced one batter on Wednesday with Carlos Beltran in his only at bat. The only run that the Red Sox have scored tonight has come on the fastball. I mean, that's how dominant RA has been tonight. There's that quick pitch right there, and it was off the point. He'll use that against batters who have high leg kicks or have a lot of timing issues at the plate, and I love it. You can pitch like that out of the windup, and it just messes up your timing. Uh, good pitch by R.A. Dickey. What an inning for Dickey. Gives up a leadoff double, the first hit he's allowed, and leaves David Ortiz stranded.
care by purchasing an $85 fan pack, and that price will include shipping. Here's what you get. A reusable Blue Jays jersey tote bag, a stainless steel kids water bottle, Blue Jays blow up baseball bat, Blue Jays hat, and Blue Jays shoelaces. Get your pack today. Visit BlueJays.com slash broadcast auction. Buck, you should have a pair of those uh, shoelaces, those Blue Jays shoelaces. Tomorrow. I should have had the blow up bat. <laughs> <laughs> when you were playing? <laughs> yeah. That's what I needed. David Price, he scattered six hits over six innings, but he finds himself trailing three to one. All right, Dickey surrendered the first hit of the ball game to David Ortiz, a leadoff double in the sixth, but they stranded Ortiz. Josh Tolley. David Price has thrown 98 pitches to this point. Pulled on the ground. Pedroia waits on. One down. So nobody is throwing in the Red Sox bullpen. Nobody's even stirring. So this is David Price, at least for this inning, I'm sure. And this is typical David Price, isn't it? Uh, you get a couple of runs early, then he. Hunkers down and starts getting tougher and tougher as the game goes along. David Price for his career against the Blue Jays, 17 and 2. He won his first eight decisions before the Blue Jays beat him. They actually beat him twice within a span of about five weeks in 2011. Ricky Romero beat him once, and Brandon Morrow beat him the second time in 2011. That's been it. Yeah, and he said, okay, that's it. I'm good with that. Now he's won his last eight decisions. Last eight, longest since Roger Clemens won nine in a row from 1988 to 1992. And that's what pitching in the American League East will do for you. He is 51 and 22 against the American League East. Tough ballparks, tough lineups. Speed pitch there, Bautista, with a mighty swing, two balls and a strike. Jose reached him for a home run back at Rogers Center, if you remember that. Gave the Blue Jays a two to nothing lead. Tried to go inside on him. It was a booming high drive. It hit the foul netting about the fourth level down the left field line. It was his sixth career home run against David Price. No one has homered more against Price than Jose Bautista. You know, some guys just rise to the occasion, don't they? When you're facing an elite pitcher, the good ones, they seem to take it personally. Four of his ten hits have left the ballpark against Boston this year. He takes another walk. A leadoff, excuse me, a one out walk to Bautista, one down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Bautista with a one out walk is camped out at first. Josh Donaldson has walked twice tonight. Donaldson looks like he's getting closer and closer. Remember his phrase, I let my eyes tell me to swing until they say stop? And that should be his mindset, I think, because he's an aggressive guy. Just Swing until your eyes say no. And Josh, when you talk to him, he says, you know, I just haven't felt in a groove all season long. 
even though I've had a couple of good games here and a couple of good games there, I just haven't felt that consistency and in that that zone, if you will, all season long. So he's ready to bust out. Price gets that one in on his hands. Oh, that got his right hand. Yeah. Yeah, that'll jam that bat back into your thumb, and a lot of guys will wear that rubber pad on their right hand to protect that thumb. Little cutter inside and jams him, and he feels that. You can see him grimace a little bit. Your whole hand goes numb. That's going to be into the seats. If you just take your hand, your right hand, and grab that meaty portion between your thumb and your index finger, that bat gets shoved back into that soft part of your hand and really creates problems and can create a deep bruise in there. And you don't want to swing the bat. You can see that's why he dropped it right there. He doesn't want to feel it. It's, it's when you get jammed or if you hit, hit it off the end of the bat like that it just keeps pounding that inside part of your thumb. And I'm telling you if they keep pounding you inside like that you don't want to swing. No it, it's really painful and it can create problems. Robbie Rouse Junior the lefty starting to loosen up for Boston. Price has now thrown one hundred and ten pitches. Getting near the end. Season high for Price 114. That was a 14 strikeout game against Atlanta. Off speed pitch and Donaldson strikes out. Five strikeouts for Price. Looked like a change up one more time for Price. Watch how he digs that ball back into his hands. And Josh swings over the top of it. He's watching him going back to. The dugout still shaking that right hand, feeling the effects of that ball that he fouled off. I know it hurts. <laughs> see John Gibbons taking a look at his third baseman. Yeah, you can see him looking at that webbing between his thumb and his index finger. That's where you get jammed. Two outs, Edwin Encarnacion takes strike one. Edwin called out on a check swing in the fifth. He homered in the first with Donaldson aboard. Then he singled to left. Bautista was thrown out trying to advance first to third. He was thrown out third base. Edwin had two home runs here at Fenway Park back on the 15th of April. He drove in all three runs in a 5 3 loss. I'll tell you, he and Bautista, when they get into this ballpark, it's almost like, okay, here we go. Home runs and the RBIs are going up. You feel very comfortable hitting here. Donaldson still feeling the effects of getting jammed. Tell you what, that deep bone bruise, it can linger for a long time. Long time. You see guys sticking their thumbs in cups of ice just to take the pain away at the end of games. Two and one to Encarnacion. Ground ball. Bogarts takes the high hop, takes his time, and that's the inning. David Price. Is through seven innings. Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead.
Fenway Park, and if you are one of them and you're thinking, every time I come to the States, my roaming charges are so high, well, why don't you consider Roam Like Home from Rogers? If you do that, you can use your phone exactly like you do at home. It starts at $5 a day in the U.S. If you want more information, go to rogers.com slash roam like home for details. Buck, everybody wants to tweet and Facebook and Snapchat and all that stuff the ball game. This is a great way to save some money. It sure is, and obviously there are a lot of fans that have made their way here from Canada. Coast to coast, I met people today from British Columbia. I met people from Moncton. I met people from Newfoundland. And they're from coast to coast, literally. Come here to Boston to watch the Blue Jays. You're watching a pretty good game by Ori Dickey. Boy, hasn't this worked out nicely for the Blue Jays, matching up Dickey against Price? Originally, it was Marcus Stroman's spot, but this is a twofold purpose. You give Stroman a little extra time. He's a youngster, and you want to make sure he's well rested. But you match up Dickey, and you baffle the Red Sox hitters in the first game of a three game series. Yeah. And, and maybe you can slow them down just a little bit. This is popped up. Darwin Barney is at a terrific night defensively at shortstop. He makes the catch one down. Well Marcus Stroman was originally slated to pitch this game and then it was going to be knuckleballers tomorrow. Dickey against Ryan but Marcus gets an extra day and he needs to bounce back a little bit. He's had a couple of rough starts lately. One of those was against the Red Sox. Note the start time of that game. It'll start around 4 o'clock. You know who the happiest guy in the ballpark is today for the Blue Jays? Because Ari Dickey's throwing today? Josh Tolley. <laughs> he told me today, he said, trying to catch the knuckleball is tough. Trying to catch the knuckleball in the shadows on a 4 o'clock game is nearly impossible. So we will watch that tomorrow for Stephen Wright. Yeah, might be a problem for Ryan Hannigan. That's Russell right. Martin will be back there for Marcus <laughs> Stroman. Boy, that was a terrific knuckleball. That one got up the home plate and just kind of wiggled. Almost waved by to Blake Swihart. What just happened there? I mean, that, that was a funky delivery. He took a little something off of it. It was wiggling, and then watch the swing from Blake Swihart. He swings and <laughs> see it. the bat just slips out of his hands. But what a pitch by Dickey. Four strikeouts for R.A. First two here in the seventh. Two up, two down. There's a drive off the bat of Mookie Betts, and Pilar is not going to get this one. It bounces over the wall for a ground rule double. Mookie Betts, his first hit of the night. That's his 12th double of the season. It comes with two outs. You know, and I think John Gibbons is going to say, okay, we can't have anything going on here. No momentum. John, uh, Ari Dickey's gotten them into the seventh inning. He gave up that extra base hit, and yeah, he's going to go to that bullpen one more time to see if they can get through this inning. Well, Ari Dickey, another terrific start against the Red Sox. He's allowed them just two hits. A leadoff double and a two out double. That's it. He'll turn things over to the bullpen. Jason Grilly will come on with two outs to face Dustin Pedroia.
Presented by the all-new Honda Civic. Now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. R.A. Dickey, his second great start against the Austin Red Sox. Last time out, he got a no decision. Right now, he's in line for the win. The runner at second base, his responsibility. Jason Grilly takes over. Same situation that we saw Jason in, in Wednesday's game when he made his Blue Jays debut. Two outs in the seventh inning. He got a very tough hitter in Carlos Beltran to fly out. He's going to face a tough hitter tonight in Dustin Pedroia. Grilly was telling me that he loves the energy on this team. He, he's in a pennant race. He can feel the energy and he just wants to contribute any way he can with this team. Dustin Pedroia hitless. Really misses with the first pitch. Pedroia is 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs and a line out. He's hit in 23 straight games against the Blue Jays. He's reached base in 30 straight games. And he has not gotten a hit, nor has he reached base in this ball game. The record is 26 games in a row hit against the Blue Jays. That was done by Jerry Remy, who's in the ballpark. Remy hit in 26 straight against the Blue Jays. Vladdy Guerrero hit in 25. And Phil Bradley tied with Pedroia, 23 game hit streak against the Blue Jays. Right now, Jason Grilly is just concerned getting this third out. He falls behind two balls and no strikes. Strike. Pedroia has faced Grilly. He is one for seven against Jason. He features a good fastball. That one was 95 miles an hour in a, in a sharp breaking ball. What he does is he creates a very tough angle for right handed batters. Look where he is on the mound. He's on the third base side of the pitching rubber. And then cross fires that ball to the outside corner. Petroya one hop to Devin Travis and Mookie Betts forgot how many outs there were. He is still at second base. Jason Grilly gets out of it, leaves a runner in scoring position. David Price threw 114 pitches over seven innings. He held the Blue Jays to just six hits. Two runs, three runs overall. He walked four and struck out five, and he's on the hook for the loss as the Blue Jays have a 3-1 lead, and he turns things over to the bullpen. He goes seven innings for the sixth time this year. Four walks, that's a season high for Price. He wasn't as sharp as we have seen him in the past. He was nibbling on the outside corner. The Blue Jays weren't biting. He ended up walking forward striking out five so he will turn it over to the bullpen Koji Uahara 
will come out of the bullpen for the first time. 23 games now for Uahar with a 2-2 two two record, a 3.86 earned run average. He doesn't throw as hard as he used to, but he's deceptive. The ball dances all over the place. He's got a great splitter. His fastball is about 85 miles an hour, but he can still get outs with it. Uahar has pitched now eight times against the Blue Jays this season. Total of six and a third coming in. The Blue Jays have touched him up for six earned runs. This is how the Red Sox like to use him, bring him in to start innings. Because he doesn't throw very hard, he doesn't get a ton of strikeouts, they would rather him start innings out of the windup. Michael Saunders, one for two, he's also hit by a pitch, takes an inside pitch on the corner. Saunders 0 for 10 against Duahai. Despite the fact that he's not a hard thrower, but you're right, he's very deceptive. A lot of arms and legs and great control. Very rarely will he make mistakes with that splitter. Keeps it down. And if you start looking for it, he's got enough fastball to get it by you. There's that fastball. You got to fight it off. Not very hard. Just 87 miles an hour, but well located. Well, Hire's now 41 years old. He signed with the Baltimore Orioles his first year in the big leagues was 2009. He actually made 12 starts. They tried to start it. But last couple of years in Japan, he was a relief pitcher. And there's strike three. <laughs> That's what I mean right there with that fastball. Locks up Michael Saunders for the first out. Home hardware and building center locations. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Beautiful shot of Fenway Park on a beautiful evening. Justin Smoke will bat left handed for the first time tonight. Smoke is one for three. Singled against Price his last time up. The leadoff single in the sixth. Smoke has a home run against Duahar. 3 1 ball game. This is an unusual score in this ballpark between these two teams. Generally, a lot more fireworks. The only fireworks tonight are two run home run by Encarnacion. That was way back in the first. It's early. <laughs> no, I think it has something to do with the guys who were throwing tonight. Well, and both pitchers have really. Stymied the opposing lineups. Boston hit 13 home runs in their four game series in Baltimore. And Smoke takes a walk. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update. Thank you very much Jamie and Chris Tillman is off the hook Mark Trumbo is three for three in that ball game. He scored a pair of runs. Chris Davis hit his 100th home run at Camden Yards and he's had another big night. Devin Travis. Devin scored a run in the fourth inning. He scored the Jays third run of the ball game. Joe Biagini, boy, has he taken a very prominent role in this Blue Jay bullpen. Grilly closed out the Red Sox in the seventh. He got Dustin Pedroia to ground out. Now Biagini is loosening up. Looks like he's going to come into the ballgame. 
Okay, some add-on runs wouldn't hurt. All right, now, Devin Travis, he's getting closer. Starting to hit the ball with a little bit more authority. Breaking ball hasn't hit it. He hasn't squared it up as consistently as you would like, but you know, he hasn't had many at bats. He okay. missed all of spring training. Had an extended rehab assignment. And now he's just getting his first look at big league pitching. Yeah, and unfortunately for for him, fortunately that he's here, but unfortunately he couldn't get these at bats in the minor leagues to get his timing with the injury to Troll Tulowitzki. He had to come up and get his at bats against Major League Pitching to help him get the timing, but he's gonna battle you. He has been putting some good at bats together. He last time up he stung the ball to right field, but it was caught by Mickey Betts. That's a good sign because I think that's where his strength is. Gets out in front of that one, but it's well foul into the upper deck. Full count. Smokes on the move. Now back. Well, the Blue Jays have won 10 of their last 13 games, and they've closed ground on the front runners. The Jays are three games over. Baltimore is eight games over. They're a game behind the Red Sox, and the Boston Red Sox are 10 games over 500. And obviously, the number everybody looks at, the loss column. The Blue Jays are four back in the loss column to both the Orioles and the Red Sox. Blue Jays have played a ton of games within the division. You talk about the American League East. It seems like we have lived there for the first two months of the season. This is the 33rd game in the AL East. There's a ball driven down the left field line, hooking and into the seats foul. Yeah, it's been interesting. You look at the standings, and now everybody says, well, you know, the East is down, the East is down, and you know what? Blue Jays have been playing the East a lot. When you look at the schedule, they play 76 games against your division, and the Blue Jays are almost half. almost halfway there. Almost half. They play Boston here. They don't come back here till the last three days of the season. Travis putting up a battle against Duahara. For comparison's sake, the Baltimore Orioles tonight are playing just their 19th game against the AL East. Tampa Bay has played 24 games against the East. New York, they're playing their 25th game tonight. Baltimore and New York hooked up. For Boston, this is their 27th game against the East. So Blue Jays have played a lot more games than anybody else in any division. Well, that just cements what I was thinking and feeling. It felt like that's all we've played is New York and Tampa, Baltimore, and Boston. Once the Blue Jays get past I believe it's the 21st of June. They play 30 straight games against non AL East teams. Chance to make some hay. Maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a drive deep, deep to left field, and Devin Travis has got a home run. What a battle Travis put up. His first home run of the season comes off Koji Uohara. And some much needed insurance for the Blue Jays here in the eighth. He was hitting a couple of balls squarely down the left field line and was thinking to myself, Devin, straighten it out, straighten it out, time it up just a little bit better. Well, he finally did. He got a pitch to his liking from Uahara, straighten it out and sent it out of here quick.
Boy, that's a big swing of the bat right there. First home run of the season for Devin Travis. Gives him RBIs number four and five, but most importantly, it gives the Blue Jays a four run lead. Timing is starting to get there for him. He turns on that thing. Justin Smoke, who was off on the pitch after about four or five foul balls, can get into a trot then after that ball leaves the ballpark. Well, the Blue Jays continue to hit the ball hard against Uaha. Two more earned runs. We had mentioned that he had problems. That's eight earned runs Uaha has given up to the Blue Jays this season. Tell you, he's not fooling anybody. Really. Fastball splitter. And the fastball's again about 87 miles an hour. Ninth career home run for Devin Travis, but the first of the season. And that's always a good one to get that out of the way. Yes, sir. Didn't he hit a home run the game he got injured? Yes, leading off that game. Yes, he was the leadoff hitter for the Blue Jays. July 28th last year. He had a leadoff home run, came back in his second at bat, took a swing, and then was overcome with pain and had to leave. And that was his last at bat. So that feels pretty good. Shows you that he's healthy. The Blue Jays, with two more home runs tonight, have now hit 26 home runs in their last 16 games. That sounds a little bit more like the Blue Jays. Edwin Encarnacion, a two run homer in the first. Devin Travis, a two run home run here in the eighth. Tell you what, Kevin Pilar is not going to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's one and two, and they keep going a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit further out, and he keeps swinging. I mean, he's already had five walks this year. Bautista's had 41. Pilar strikes out, second strikeout for Uahara. He struck out Saunders looking to start the inning, then walked Smoke in. Travis hit the two run home run. John Farrell, the skipper of the Red Sox, is out. That'll be it for Uahara. So he's out of the ball game, touched up for a home run, second home run he's allowed. It's like Noe Ramirez coming into the ball game for Boston. Jays up 5 1.
new pitcher for Boston is Noe Ramirez. He's making his 11th appearance of the season. This would be his fifth against the Toronto Blue Jays. He was just recalled from AAA Pawtucket yesterday for the fifth time already. Fifth stint this year with the Boston Red Sox. And he's gotten into game, 10 games. Five of them against the Blue Jays. Fastball slider changeup is what the Blue Jays can expect from him. First pitch slider, Barney. Ducked out of the way. It broke in there for a strike. Watch Darwin thinks it's a fastball, tries to duck out of the way, and it's actually a strike. You can have a little chuckle on that. Yeah, you have to laugh at yourself for that one. Fly ball to the left. Swihart is there. Ramirez closes out the Blue Jays. So we'll go to the bottom of the eighth, which is a 5 1 lead. Now, time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Fans here and this crew came together, but they lost their own. <laughs> now the end got tired. He said, no. Come on, boys, you got to get into Sweet Caroline. There's Sweet Caroline as we speak. Even the Jays fans getting involved in Sweet Caroline here in Boston. Bottom of the eighth inning, that's a tradition at Fenway Park. I want to know where the O is. Yeah, come on, o. Donaldson. <laughs> Donaldson, they lost their O. <laughs> Joe B. Genie into the ball game. Here are Joe's numbers. He's taken over as the eighth inning guy for the Blue Jays. He's only given up two earned runs in 21 innings. That's an 086 earned run average. And there's a breaking ball. Well, Blue Jays are fairly confident they can handle Bogarts with breaking balls. You saw what Aaron Sanchez did to it during that sharp breaking ball, but Sanchez does that to a lot of people. The Yankees didn't have any fun against that breaking ball. Got a hit streak on the line tonight. He's over so far. 26 game hit streak for Bogarts. That's to Pedroia. His is in jeopardy. He's 0 for 4, and we're in the eighth. He made the last out of the seven. Biagini's got to throw a strike. 3 and 0. Last thing you want to do is encourage the Red Sox here in Fenway Park. Yeah, yeah you don't want to be walking, guys. Uh, John Gibbons has had a lot of confidence in his young right hander. This is a big situation for him. A four pitch walk. Designated hitter, number 34, David Orsi. 
David Ortiz at the first hit of the night against R.A. Dickey, a leadoff double in the six. He moved to third, but he was stranded. Dickey would then give up a second double to Mookie Betts in the seventh, but he too was stranded. Only run scored on a pass ball. Charge to Josh Toley in the first. First games of series, very big. You want to come in here and win the first game of a series. Blue Jays are trying to win their fifth series in a row. Yeah, that's the whole thing about winning that first game. And you got to figure that the Blue Jays, with the lead here in the eighth inning, will pull out all the stops with their bullpen well rested. Whatever matchups John Gibbons is looking for right now, he can use them. Pat, it's a different setup for this infield defense with the shift on. Donaldson stays at short. Barney, the shortstop, moves to second, but he's played more second lately. And I've been watching Barney communicating with Donaldson. Hey, ground ball to Devin Travis. Josh, you have to turn in the middle of the diamond. If there is a ground ball to that right side, it's going to be Donaldson making the pivot. Ortiz lines it into the seats. We have seen the Blue Jays keep the shortstop over there. So if there was a ground ball that he's more inclined to, to make the, the turn, they've also had Josh as a second baseman or the third defender on the right side of the infield. But right now they've got Donaldson at short and there's Barney, the shortstop, playing at second. Ortiz with that double in the sixth extends his personal hit streak to 11 games. He has eight doubles in his 11 game hit streak and six home runs. That's why he leads the American League in extra base hits. That double was his 41st already. This is trouble. Left field line. Off the monster. Bogarts is stopped at third as Ortiz has another double. From foul line to foul line, Big Poppy still getting the extra base hits. You know, that's why it's so tough to pitch to him in this ballpark. If you stay hard inside, he's liable to pull the ball down the right field line for a home run. If you go soft away like they do right here, he can bang it off that wall for extra bases. Well, he knew immediately. He put his head down and was headed for a second. He knew this was going to be high off the green monster. Brian Butterfield stops Bogarts. Nobody out. And the Red Sox are knocking on the door. And that's why those two runs in the top of the inning were so huge for the Blue Jays. 501 double, doubles now as a Red Sox. The guy that the, they're not worried about the guys on the bases right now. You're counting outs. Get the guy at the plate. Roberto Osuna loosening up. Biagini issued that leadoff walk. Remember, we saw Aaron Loop earlier in the ball game putting what appeared to be some hot stuff on his elbow. He's not throwing in that bullpen. He might not have felt good when he got up. There's a strike. It's one and one to Hanley Ramirez. I thought Aaron would be getting up for Shaw and Bradley, the two lefties that are up after Hanley Ramirez as they try to bridge themselves to Osuna, but with Roberto throwing now. John Gibbons is telling everybody, hey, I'll go to him in this inning if I have to. Well, and that's the thing about these ball games here at Fenway. You've got to worry about this game in hand. Okay? You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Right. Right. Blue Jays had the off day yesterday. Everybody is recharged and energized and ready for this three game series.
Piagini a little bit out of sorts here. He had the leadoff walk then gave up the double to Ortiz and now he falls behind Ramirez. And you can see him talking to himself right now out on that mound. You got to forget about the runners on base. Concentrate on making the pitch here. Stop the bleeding if you will. Dolly and Biagini are going to talk things over. And so are the coaches. And they're going to talk it over. Pitching coach, bench coach, and manager. Okay, here we are. How do we get out of this? I got to believe Loop got up, found out he was tight, couldn't get loose, and he's not even throwing now. Osuna is the only reliever throwing, so that suggests to me that Luke wouldn't be available for Sean Bradley because that's a natural spot. Yeah, him. yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Ground ball. Barney will take the out at first. Bogarts comes in to score. That's one out. Devin Travis, that two-run home run is huge in the top of this inning. Every add on run I think when you play the Red Sox at Fenway Park from the seventh inning on is huge. Getting some pointers from the veteran. So here is Travis Shaw. He's 0 for 2 with the walk and we mentioned Shaw leads the Red Sox with 10 RBIs against the Blue Jays. He's no easy out. That's something we haven't seen at all from Joe Biagini this year bouncing balls like that. It's a big situation for him. Young kid. John Gibbons has shown a lot of confidence in him putting him in the eighth inning. He has performed very well to this point and earned that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But you're right, first game of a three game series in Fenway Park. What do you think it's going to be like in September? <laughs> <laughs> or October when the Blue Jays come back here for the last three games of the season, right here in this ballpark? Joe does have a one career save. He got that at Minnesota, if you remember that game. Well, that's a good pitch. He really tied him up with that inside pitch one and two. Now. Yeah, he's got some pitches to get you out. You're very impressed with his cutter. That was a great cutter right there. That really tied up Travis Shaw. He's got a good curveball too. And plenty of fastball. Ortiz at second. Shaw was just three for 17 in the Oriole four game series. And he's over two tonight. There's that curveball. I like that curveball. He throws it from right over the top. Comes right out of the same arm slot as his fastball. And the one thing about that curveball is there's not a big hump in it that shows hitters that it's a curveball. I mean, it's a downer. It looks like a fastball and then just drops. Eugenie's ahead one and two. Oh, what a good pitch. Took something off and strikes out Sean. Two down now. Well, John Gibbons, he's got a sooner ready. He's not going to waste them. There's the call to the bullpen. Sean strikes out. Jackie Bradley Jr. is the scheduled hitter. He's 0 for 3 tonight. So Gibbons has made the call. Biagini 
gives up a leadoff walk and a run. He'll turn things over to the closer, Roberto Osuna. It gives up the leadoff walk. It comes around to score. Ortiz hit a double, and then he strikes out Travis Shaw. Turned things over to Roberto Osuna, and now this is a save situation. And he's 12 for 13 in saves. There are the outstanding numbers from Roberto Osuna, the, the fireballer. He's averaging 10 strikeouts per nine innings. He is asked tonight for a four out save. Joe Biagini threw 19 pitches. Looked like he was starting to find it. But John Gibbons wants this one. Jackie Bradley goes around trying to check on that high fastball at 96. Bradley 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Between the mound and home, Donaldson, the third baseman, takes charge, and Osuna gets out of it. The Red Sox get a run on a double and a ground down. But go to the ninth. The Blue Jays have a 5-2 lead.
out to the Rogers Center over the last week, and now is your last chance to purchase the 2016 Blue Jays Flex Pack. Get your pack before June 9th at 5 p.m. because that is when it will be over. Our account executives will find the best package that suits your needs. You go to BlueJays.com and learn more about how to get a Blue Jays Flex Pack. And we go to the ninth inning. Let's send it back to Buck and Tabby. Thank you very much, Barry. And there are going to be some big games coming up on the schedule, so make sure you get your Flex Pack and don't get left out. Blue Jays are making a run, trying to move four games over 500 and gain a game on the front-running Boston Red Sox. Josh Tolley, he's gone 0 for 3. He'll lead things off for the Jays here in the top of the ninth. How about the Blue Jays tonight offensively against David Price? They haven't gone down 1, 2, 3 one time tonight. They have kept the pressure on every single inning. They stranded a runner in the first seven innings. The only reason they didn't strand any in the eighth is because Devin Travis had a two run homer. But they've had base runners on all night long. They hit into a couple of double plays, but they've had two more home runs tonight. They now have 26 home runs in their last 16 games. Yeah, I, I love that. You, you keep the pressure on. You, you get a walk or you get an error or whatever, a base hit here and there. And just that pitcher, he's in the stretch for the whole inning. Well, Michael Saunders and Justin Smoke have really lengthened the lineup now, and of course with Devin Travis coming back. Travis's presence is also added to the length of the lineup. Darwin Barney's done a terrific job filling in for Tulowitzki. I agree. I agree, and, and they're having good at bats. Josh Tolley's having a good at bat. Darwin Barney has put up some good at bats over the last week or so. Kevin Pilar's hit the ball hard tonight twice. Breaking ball, Tolley strikes out. Noe Ramirez came in to get the final out of the eighth. He gets the first batter here in the ninth. The Orioles hit seven home runs against Boston last night in Baltimore, and Blue Jays have hit two more tonight. Boston has some pitching concerns. I think so. I, I, I think David Price is going to be fine. We'll get our first look at Eduardo Rodriguez, who's been on the disabled list pretty much all season long. John Farrell has said that uh, after the game. He says we, we've got some concerns on the pitching end. Porcello's has given up 11 home runs. You know what you can't do is you can't keep asking your offense to score seven or eight runs a game. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, you just you, put a you, lot of pressure on them. You got to believe that the Red Sox are going to cool, cool off at some point. Mm -hmm. The game is still about pitching and defense. That's why I think the Blue Jays, and we showed that earlier, starters earn run average, they're right up there. That wins out over 162 games. No doubt about it. Blue Jays have had both tonight pitching, defense, and timely hitting. We've had all three elements that we talk about. Bautista gets underneath this. Schreihart. The left fielder makes the grab. Two down. Josh Donaldson, he had that tough at bat in the seventh. That was against David Price. They got jammed on that inside pitch. He's got a thumb guard now to protect that thumb. You see that little piece of foam rubber that fits right into that slot between your thumb and your index finger to pad your your hand on any swings. Those things have been around for a long time. One of my former teammates Hal McCray he would never wear it on the outside. 
he would put it underneath his batting glove. You can see it there when he's got his hand off the bat, but it's a rubber sponge cushion that goes up against your thumb and loops over your thumb and rests up against the bat. And does it work? Darn right it works. Yeah, it saves you. It takes some of the shock away from that bruised hand. But McCray would get an oversized batting glove and put that device on his thumb. He called it a game saver. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't want the pitcher to know that his thumbs bothered him. Didn't want the pitcher to know. Ground ball to third shot takes his time and Blue Jays go quickly in the ninth. We'll come back for the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays with a 5-2 lead. Christian Vasquez will face Roberto Osuna when we return to Fenway. tonight he's looking for his third win of the season and he has really stymied the Red Sox in each of his last two starts against them. No hitters into that sixth inning in that last start just two hits tonight. Uh, his knuckleball was a little inconsistent. That's the, the five walks but did a good job with those five walks in just a hundred pitches pitching into the seventh inning. He only gave up two hits. He got a double to Ortiz and remember that one down the right field line. This is Marco Hernandez pinch hitting for the catcher Christian Vasquez and he can swing it. He goes after the first pitch. Very aggressive hitter fouls it into the seats. He is pinch hitting for Vasquez the catcher who went 0 for 3 in the ball game. These are two big outs for Osuna. Eight and nine in the lineup. Keep them off the base before they turn it over to Dex, Pedroia, and Bogarts. Absolutely. Marco Hernandez, he's a young player. He got his first big league hit against the Blue Jays. Not afraid to swing it either. Ball on a strike to the pinch hitter here in the ninth. The breaking ball. Now it's one and two. Osuna came in to face Jackie Bradley Jr. with the runner at second base, and he got Bradley Jr. to pop out to end the inning.
Hernandez strikes out a one out now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central. Here's Ken Reed in the Marco Hosman. Thanks a lot, Ken. That's all coming up right after this ball game, so stay tuned for that. One out. Like Swihart, the left fielder, takes strike one. Swihart has popped out twice and struck out. I tell you, every time I watch Roberto Osuna pitch, I become very impressed. He's not afraid to try different things. He might throw a change up here, he might try a slider there. Fastball. I mean, he's very in tune to what he's doing out there and, and understands hitters and what they're trying to do to him. That's a pretty good pitch. He didn't get the call. And they're not just random pitches. He has a purpose behind yes. every pitch he throws. It's really interesting for a young guy to have such a good feel for it. I had a chance to talk to him when we were at home and we were talking about that. About you know what's your thought process when you're out there and, and he's always thinking and he's always trying to get better. He goes the change up's been working. I've been watching this team and they're this other team not the Boston Red Sox. They're susceptible to change up. He goes, I might throw some change ups tonight. I said Roberto you throw 97 miles an hour. You still got to get him out. Yeah he is not locked into radar readings at all. Nope. He understands the value of changing speeds. It's got three top notch pitches now. His fastball, slider, and his changeup. And, and his slider has improved dramatically. Yeah, it has. And he's not the guy who says, okay, here it is. Go ahead and hit it. He's pitching out there. And I think that comes from his father, that, who has taught him a lot about this game of baseball. There's a base hit. Left that one up out over the plate. Try hard with a one out single. Now you got to turn the lineup over, and this is when it gets interesting. Bookie Betts, the leadoff man, doubled in his last at bat. That came off of Dickey in the last man that Dickey faced. A two out double in the seventh. Betts had that terrific run against Baltimore in that Baltimore series. He was eight for 17 with five home runs. He walked three times, scored eight runs, and drove in eight. Mookie Betts was the first big leaguer to 50, 50 runs scored this season. He scored 50 runs in his 53rd game of the season. And I think he's just scratching the surface of his ability. He's going to just get better and better with age and experience. Talked about that game where he had three home runs. He's the first Red Sox player to have a three homer game before his 24th birthday since Fred Lynn in 1975. Went around, it's one and two. Lander Bogarts, the other part of this dynamic duo, just 23 years old, Betson Bogarts. And he's hoping to get up in this ninth inning and keep that hit streak alive. Dustin Pedroia is on deck, and he's got his hit streak against the Blue Jays on the line. Pedroia, 0 4 tonight. Luki Betts walked to start the game, bottom of the first, and scored on a pass ball. Red Sox didn't score again until the eighth. Bautista Pilar calls him off and Pilar makes the catch two down. Boy Bautista did that perfectly. He called for it initially and then he heard Pilar coming over 
And Bautista just let him have it, peel it out of the way. Yeah, and he probably told him, go ahead and take it. Take it and then peel out of the way, just get out of his way so there's no confusion in the outfield. The center fielder has got priority over the corner outfielders. And if you hear that center fielder calling it, get out of his way. Neston Pedroia, 0 for 4. Pedroia taking all the way. Swihart, Pedroia fouls it back. The Red Sox are down to their last strike. Boston has gone 13 and 3 here at home at Fenway Park since April 29th. They have really played well in this ballpark. And they have scored tons of runs during that time. That run at first base means nothing, so Justin Smoke's going to play behind him. And that's a buck. And What's that all about? He just forgot that he was playing behind him. Yeah. Now, Jerry, Josh Tolley's going to go out and talk to Osuna, second base umpire Sean Barber, coming in here. Now, Jerry Mio's the crew chief is coming on. I wonder if he's asking him did he step off before he went over there if he stepped off he could fake a throw over first base but I'm not sure he did. I'm not sure he did either. I mean what else could they be talking about. That's the only thing I think they could say OK did he step off. And. They're going to move him back. Yeah they say he stepped off. We're going to have a look at it. Here comes John Farrell, of course. He's not going to buy in. Well, yes, yeah, he wants an explanation of what that was all about. Uh, Smoke is playing behind him. That run means nothing. Watch One more soon. time. Let's see. Oh, oh he sorry. didn't step off. That, that's a balk. Yeah. That's clearly a balk. Ruben Amaro, the first base coach, said the same thing over there. Now, Farrell, of course. And Jerry Mia said, I didn't see him step off, but then somebody over there in that umpire crew. Saw him step on. But that was a very unusual meeting by yeah. the umpire. Sean Barber, the second base umpire, is the one that came in. And he's the one that initiated the conversation. They got together, had a conference about it, and decided that Osuna stepped off. Well, it didn't look like he stepped I on. would like to, uh, that explanation right there. The only other thing I can think of is did somebody call timeout? That's the only thing, because that was a bar. Oh, and two. Pedroia gets a base hit to right. Swihart heads to third. Pedroia gets an at bat in his final at bat, possibly, and extends his hit streak to 24 straight games. Against the Blue Jays. And giving the opportunity for Xander Bogarts to keep his hit streak alive. Bogarts is 0 for 2 with a pair of walks. He walked and scored his last time up in the eighth. He's got a 26 game hit streak at stake. And if he keeps that going, that means the go ahead run comes to the plate. And David Ortiz. So you want to end this thing right here. Bogarts represents the time run. Two outs. These games never end easily. No. It, it always seems like the Red Sox. Get that time run to the play or the go ahead run to the play. It's never easy. And, and you were right. The whole key retire those first two batters, the eight and nine batters of the inning. So you don't have to deal with these guys. Osuna came into the ball game with two outs in the eighth. You got Jackie Bradley Jr. to pop out to end the inning. Three and zero, David Ortiz. 
Braves looming on deck. the knees. It's a full count. Pedroia at first. They're going to play behind him. Tolley's going to make sure Osuna understands that, given what's happened in yeah. this inning. And, and Josh just told all the infielders, hey, look, three and two, the guy's going to be taking off right here. The play's going to be over at first base. I think Smoke should play behind him. They got to keep the ball away from him. You don't want to come into this guy because he can hit it over the green monster in left field and tie this ball game up. So you've got to stay away from him. That's why you got to take that first baseman and try to plug up that hole on the right side. Swihart had a single. He's at third. Pedroia single to right. He's at first. Three, two, two outs. Pedroia will be moving on the pitch. Xander Bogarts, Roberto Osuna. Got it. Bogart strikes out his hit streak comes to an end and the Blue Jays win the opener five to two. Roberto Osuna reached back for a little something extra right there three and two that one registered ninety nine miles an hour on the scoreboard here said you know what I'm going to go with my number one against one of the best hitters in baseball and he finishes the job. And the Blue Jays win that first game of this tough series. Ari Dickey is the winner, his third win of the season. Edwin Incarnation got it going with a two run home run. Roberto Osuna picks up his first career save.